Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a review for an online quiz in Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. In it, we're looking at the first quiz for Chapter 9, which is on late adulthood. The first question in the quiz is this. 66-year-old Carl applies for a job as the head of the maintenance department at a local factory. Because he has nearly 50 years' experience, Carl feels that he is a serious contender for the job. However, he soon finds out from an inside source that he is not in the running for the job because of his age. Carl is the victim of what? Ageism, elderism, maturism, and generism. Well, those are all kind of cute terms. Um, the one that is generally used to talk about age discrimination is um, ageism. Um, again, a little hard to spell, but um, that's the one we generally use. Uh, 66, you know, um, you're actually not allowed. It's against the uh, ADA regulations to, um, actually it's not ADA, but it's equal opportunity employment, um, to use age as a factor in hiring or not hiring a person. And if they find out you can be in big trouble. Okay. Question number two, what type of intelligence is most vulnerable to decline in late adulthood? Choices are crystallized, subjective, formulized, or fluid. Well, crystallized tends to build up over time. Subjective and formalized, formalized are not terms that we use, but uh, fluid is. That has a lot to do with processing speed and um, ability to manipulate information, and that does go down over time. On the other hand, crystallized intelligence tends to go up, and so there's, you know, there's a compensation of sorts. Number three, what is an example of prospective memory? Cheryl thinks about what she needs to buy at the store. Don rehearses his lines for an upcoming play. Edith practices her dance solo for tomorrow's show. Or Juan studies National Brands, Inc.'s website prior to his job interview. Well, those are all good things to do. But in terms of prospective memory, that is getting prepared. It's kind of a funny thing, memory about the future or remembering what you will need to know. Uh, Cheryl thinks about what she needs to buy at the store is actually the best example. You can look up some other examples of that as well if you want. Question number four. Kunzman and Baltz know that noted that wise people's approach to life's prop oh, geez, that wise people approach life's problems in a way this is an impossible to diagram sentence that addresses what? Simplicity rather than grandeur, logic and reason, the meaning of life, or the most efficient solution. Well, obviously there's going to be individual differences on this, and uh, some people are going to go for each one of these, but the one that is most common. Uh, they found in their own particular research was that wise people focused on the meaning of life, um, however you may construe that. Um, so taking a very big picture thing. And that's, interestingly, you may recall in the lecture we talked about older people being more distractible and that actually distractibility helps in terms of framing things in terms of the meaning of life. It's kind of curious how that works. Number five, what is true of dementia? Part of the normal process of aging, the second most common cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. Although memory declines, other cognitive functions remain intact, or infection is one cause of dementia. Well, um, it's not a normal part of aging. It is Alzheimer's is actually the single most common. It's number one. Uh, other cognitive functions remain intact. No, other things can slow down too. So the answer is D, infection is one cause of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common, but infection is on the list. Number six, according to Erickson, good old Eric Erickson, adjustment in the late years requires what? Preparing future generations, perspective on life events, the wisdom to let go, or modesty and humility. Well, you know, in a sense, all of those are good things and all of them may help, but the one that Eric Erickson was talking about in particular during his uh, final psychosocial stage of development is the wisdom to let go. It, it's an interesting one um, because it, the idea here is that you're at a point in your life where you can't really make big changes anymore and you're hoping that um, there's some sort of coherence and meaning in what you've done and you've got, you know, so he says to let go. Um, what's interesting, of course, is the age at which you can enter this stuff can be 65 and people can live for 30 years after that. So um, how and when that happens is an, is an open question. All right, number seven. Sarah visits with her 92-year-old grandmother, Esther, one afternoon. Esther, the grandma, tells Sarah story after story about her relationship with her late husband, Hal. How they met, the first time they kissed, how he proposed to her, and what their wedding was like. Esther's reminiscence illustrates a... Life review, the recollective portrayal, 
See generative storytelling or the experienced narrative. Well, they all sound pretty fancy to me. Um, but the one that's going to get you credit for this in terms of a specific form of recollection is life review. She's going back over the events in her life, telling a temporal uh, narrative. Anyhow, it, recollective portrayal, it's a nice term. Um, generative storytelling to me implies something that's made up out of randomness. Um, anyhow, those are uh, that's the one that's going to work. Number eight, what is a critique of disengagement theory? Of course, that assumes you actually know what disengagement theory is. Um, the choices are A, disengagement typically occurs with pathological rather than normal aging. B, well-being generally increases when older adults pursue goals. C, people who were socially isolated as younger adults seek out new relationships in late adulthood. Or D, cognitive decline prevents older adults from inner focus. Well, disengagement theory is the idea that it is normal, um, to, um, really kind of separate yourself from others and remove yourself basically to prepare for die. I mean, truthfully, I just think of like, you know, the animals going off in the woods by themselves to die. But um, there, there are several problems with disengagement theory. And the, the most obvious is this. Well-being actually increases when older adults pursue goals, when they engage. So well-being does not apparently involve disengagement for many people. Uh, in fact, engagement still appears to be a very good thing, even in late adulthood. Question number nine. 69-year-old Elsa experiences extreme anxiety as she prepares dinner for her and her husband after she returns home from work each evening and cannot figure out the cause. So extreme anxiety. What is Elsa most likely experiencing? The choices are depression, phobic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, or panic disorder. Well, these are all serious problems, and they all hit people at different times and situations. But the one she's talking about right here in terms of extreme anxiety that she cannot pinpoint, that's going to be an example of a panic disorder where you start having trouble breathing and you can sort of pass out or throw up. Um, think of it as a much more acute version of generalized anxiety disorder. Last question on the first quiz is which scenario represents the most common reason to, for divorce in a in late adulthood long-term marriage? So, Alan and Bethany are getting divorced because they grew apart. B, Michael and Patty are getting divorced because Patty is in love with another man. C, Rajiv and Padma are getting divorced because they cannot resolve their differences. Or D, Harold and Rena are getting divorced because they never got over the death of their son. Obviously, the reasons that people get together and break up have a lot of indiv individual variation, and all of these will be legitimate, or let me phrase that, all of these will be actual causes under different situations. But in terms of the most common for divorce in late adulthood, so after 65, is actually the pretty easy one. You know, somebody's in love with somebody else, and they got um, are going to go pursue that one. I know people who've done this. It's... Um, but that's going to be the most common in late adulthood. I'm assuming that for most of the other things growing apart and whatnot, the divorce would have happened earlier. Anyhow, that is the end of the first online quiz for chapter one on late adulthood, excuse me, chapter nine, late adulthood for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. Thanks for watching.